These are not acts of war. These are crimes, cowardly crimes against defenseless people. They are typical of Axis mentality, Axis standards, and Axis ideas. The most vicious instincts of common murderers have been erected into a system of government. The enemy has a deep hatred for things which make us free men and women, a deep contempt for all humanity. War was not our choice. Pearl Harbor was struck while at peace. We Americans can never forgive their treachery. Every forging kills a Jap. Every tank kills a Jap. Every truck kills a Jap. Every plane kills a Jap. Every shell kills a Jap. Every gun kills a Jap. How about it, folks? Have you killed a Jap soldier today? At dawn we slept. The Untold Story of Pearl Harbor by Gordon W. Prang with Donald M. Goldstein and Catherine V. Dillon. Of course, our greatest work was done with Gordon Prang, The Dawn We Slept. This is the new hardback edition. There's a softback out now. 18 printings, uh, approximately a million point one copy sold. Uh, been out since 1981. Considered a definitive work on the subject of Pearl Harbor. It was running up for the full surprise, uh, lost by one vote, we were told. Pearl Harbor, The Verdict of History, by Gordon W. Prang, with Donald M. Goldstein and Catherine V. Dillon. Pearl Harbor, The Verdict of History, is perhaps the most scholarly work on Pearl Harbor ever written. What we did here was we decided that, the, unfortunately, people didn't want to know about the attack itself. They wanted to know who was responsible. And in this book, we go through every conspiracy theory that one could, that's ever been written about Pearl Harbor and disprove them all. And our final conclusion is that we just bungled it. They caught us asleep by God, and no matter what others say, uh, there's no proof that Roosevelt ever knew and that the Japanese planned and executed the attack and they just caught us asleep. And rather than admit that they caught us asleep, we had to blame it on somebody and so we blamed it on Roosevelt, or we blamed it on the people there, but all the, all the people involved were responsible for negligence or failure to, to uh, act in the proper manner. December 7th, 1941, the day the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, by Gordon W. Prang, with Donald M. Goldstein and Catherine V. Dillon. December 7th was the third and final book of a trilogy, At Dawn We Slept, this book here tells you what happened that particular day. Uh, it's full of anecdotes from people like uh, Barry Goldwater, uh, George Bush, Bob uh, Hope, uh, uh, in a way, who's a senator from, uh, from Hawaii at the, and now, at the time, was a little boy. Uh, it's done very, very well with the Military Book Club selection. Uh, one of our classic works here is uh, Pearl Harbor, The Way It Was. It, we have about 2,000 photographs, but we can only get 450 uh, views because of the cost of it. This book here is, was a military book club selection uh, and was uh, uh, used by ABC in the Peabody Winning Award uh, film, uh, Pearl Harbor, Two Years That uh, Changed the World, which won the uh, Peabody Award for documentaries in 1991. Now the book itself is still in print and it's going into paperback soon. It's an AAUS book. Today, the story of American unreadiness at Pearl Harbor remains a puzzle with no single answer, a drama with no individual villain. How could the unthinkable have happened? How could a large Japanese fleet enter Hawaiian waters undetected? The Pearl Harbor Papers here is the original work. It's the, we got so tired of hearing about uh, the Americans uh, uh, knew about it and that the Roosevelt knew about it, and etc., that we decided that we would show the world what the Japanese were thinking. So these are the original documents that the Japanese, Genda who led, planned the attack, Fuchida who led it, uh, Yamamoto's love letters, etc., in this book. Inside the book itself is a map map used to brief Emperor Hirohito on December 22, 1941. Uh, this is a military book club selection and about 25,000 sold. 
uh, a fading victory is a story of Matsumi Ugaki. Ugaki was, was the chief of staff of Admiral Yamamoto. Uh, he later became commander of the Kamikaze forces, and it's Ugaki who kept a day-by-day -day account of what happened. It's the only document ever written by anybody on American or the Japanese, or the British side for that matter, which was a day-by-day -day account of the war as they saw it. It was translated for us by a fellow named Masataka Chihaya, who was a very good friend of ours. Um, Ugaki dies. He takes off into the air in, in the last days of his life. Uh, I'll find pictures here. We, we, could, we could show this. In the last days of, of his life, he, there he is. Uh, he's in the airplane, and there he's getting ready, a little short man. And there he is taking off. He's going to take off into the sunset and die. Uh, he was with Yamamoto when Yamamoto was shot down in the famous, uh, uh, when we caught Yamamoto over Guadalcanal. He is only one of two survivors. There were two, he and another fella. And he wrote a day by day, he wrote a very good account of what really happened and why Yamamoto was killed, etc., which is in this diary, published by the University of Pittsburgh Press, and also a book of the Muff Club selection. Dark Samurai is a story of Mitsu Fuchida. Fuchida and my mentor Prang were very good friends. Uh, Fuchida here, who, uh, who led the attack on Pearl Harbor and then got religion, became a born-again Christian and became a minister. He toured around the world with Billy Graham. Uh, Billy Graham uh, wrote a little introduction for us, and in the book itself, uh, you find it here, is a picture of Billy and, and, uh, and Fuchida uh, together. Target Tokyo, the story of the Zorg, S-O-R-G, spy ring, located in Tokyo for 10 years. Uh, Zorg is allegedly a double agent who saved Russia uh, during World War II by telling the Russians that the Japanese were not going to attack and therefore enabled the Russians to pull many 20 divisions off their border to save Stalingrad. Almost sold out, but we think about making a movie on called Target Tokyo. Please stand by for their special news release. Japanese neared Midway on June 3rd, hoping to launch an all-out knockout blow on that pair of coral atolls shortly after dawn on June 4th. They were roundly defeated during the ensuing three days. This miracle Midway was our best book. This uh, book was a book of the Moe Club selection and sold about uh, 250,000 copies. It's still in print. It's in its 12th printing. Uh, Penguin has it, originally put out by McGraw Hill. It's considered one of the classics on the battle itself. It's 10 o'clock, and here is the news you've been waiting for. This is the Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Force. People of Western Europe. A landing was made this morning on the coast of France by troops of the Allied Expeditionary Force. The hour of your liberation is approaching. Uh, the latest book that we did was D-Day Normandy. This is a story in photographs, which we're trying to do a CD-ROM on. And this book was the official book of the uh, Normandy Foundation, which is a foundation in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, P.S. Allinger is one of the leaders of this foundation. The book is still out. It's a military book club collection. Told about 30,000 copies and still going strong. The Aleutians are a string of island bases extending over a thousand miles westward from the Alaskan Peninsula. These islands, the Japs once considered a back door to the United States. But when the door was opened... Oh, we got about incident! The Willow Wall War was a special book that we did with the Arkansas National Guard. The Arkansas National Guard asked us to do this book about five years ago, and we really didn't want to do it. But it turned out to be one of the, the, uh, the best, uh, most fun that we had. Here we did about uh, 300 interviews of people that served in the Lucian campaign, which was a largely forgotten war. Bill Clinton's chief of staff was the uh, his brother was killed in this war. And we did this for him, although at the time we didn't know Clinton was going to be president. I have seen war, and I hate war. 
I say that again and again.